You're darn right. Glad to have you. Welcome to the program. Thanks a lot for stopping by. It is the Joe Pags Show. Great radio stations across the land. Newsmax TV, JoePags.com for all the social media on a Wednesday. Uh, that, that's a Trump day. You see what I did there? Start the week at the bottom of the hill on Monday morning. We get through Monday. We get through Tuesday. We get through Wednesday. After Wednesday, straight downhill to the weekend from here. Let's check in with Fergie. Trump, Trump. Is she saying Trump? Trump, Trump? I think she said Trump. I'm pretty sure she's saying Trump. Trump and Trump. Carrie, you're pretty sure she said Trump in every last one of those. No? No. That, no, no, no. Is that she not what happened? Trump. No, not I thought that song. She might have. No. Trump. No. My Trump, my Trump, my Trump. No? It didn't, no. it didn't go that way? <laughs> it right. I just, that I'm just way. wondering because I, I no, felt for a sure. second like it might have been my new. Trump, my Trump, my Trump. So what's new? Mm. Hey, I don't know. Anything happened last night? I don't know. Anything You're the news big? person. See, mm-hmm. lest, lest anybody give me a hard time that I'm wearing a blue shirt, here's my red tie that I had on all, all day yesterday. Uh, I've got more than one red tie, but I like this one, so I thought that I'd bring it back out. Had the red tie on the entire time, and, and let me say this. And this is the only real back padding I'll give myself. Um, mm-hmm. But it's not really about me. It's really about the listeners and the viewers. We called this thing a long time ago. We said that Trump would win a long time ago. And when people started calling in from Michigan saying, you know, he's going to take Michigan. I was like, all right, man, I'm down. And in fact, he took Michigan. And I had tip to those of you in Minnesota because he didn't take it. But holy crap, was it close? I mean, it was way closer than anybody expected it to be. Um, and, and let me throw this out there. We are based in Texas. And there is a push in this great state to try to get Texas to turn blue. In fact, the big media and the liberal progressive types out there call Texas a purple state. Carrie, do you remember how many points I said uh, Donald Trump would win Texas by just this uh, week? You said, you said 10 I did. What, what, what did he end up winning? I, I forget. Uh, by 9. Actually, the last poll numbers I saw, it's 10. It's oh, 53 okay. to 43. Um, so right. even if it is, let, let's go with nine. Even if it is nine, I mean, dude, that's not even close. So calm down. Yes, you know, South Central Texas, where we happen to be, for some reason, and it's disappointing, is turning blue or has been blue for a long time because the city of San Antonio is blue. But um, the state of Texas is red by, by double digits. I mean, in the last gubernatorial race, you saw a, a Democrat who was going to turn the state blue, lose by 20. So let's take a breath and let's calm down. So what happened last night? Man, it's a great question. Because everybody but everybody, unless you're using your brain and actually talk to the people like we get to every day, everybody who thought they were in the know, all of these alleged pollsters were dead wrong. I saw pollsters yesterday doing backflips, trying to, well, because of the margin of error, we actually were right. No, you weren't. (laughs) <laughs> How could they get it so wrong? So wrong. How could they have been so wrong about this? Carrie, I think what happened All was, and I've been saying it for a long time, what happened here in this election is those who ended up voting for Donald Trump were not talking to the pollsters. They were maybe lying about it. They didn't want to be open and upfront about the fact they were voting for Trump. They mm-hmm. feared repercussions. They really did. Um, and, and I think that a lot of people who ended up going to the polls and voting for Donald Trump never told a soul, other than their really close inner circle, that they were going to do so. But when you're looking at a guy who is, and I called him this last night at 2.20 in the morning or whatever it was, he's a guy who's a blue-collar billionaire. And what that means to me is he's a guy that employs people and acts like one of the employees. You hear over and over stories of him talking to the people in the hard hats, and Rudy Giuliani was saying this the other day, and and Janine Pirro was saying this the other day. He's a guy who walks up to the hard hats and shakes their hands and puts a hard hat on and, and has them explain what they're doing and, and how it's going today. And he really does relate with them. They tried to, and by they I mean the media, Hollywood, pop culture, the music industry, and the Democrats, they tried to portray him as somehow disconnected uh, or out of touch, when in fact that really is what was going on with Hillary Clinton the entire time. I really do see the, the pattern of where he grabbed that swath of America that nobody thought he would get. It was from what's called the Rust Belt. It was from coal country. It was from manufacturing country. It was from areas of the country that have seen their jobs go overseas, into Mexico, into Canada, and go away from here. And those people just want their jobs back. They don't really care about WikiLeaks, uh, WikiLeaks, he said, leaks. 
Um, they don't really care about what Trump said on a bus 11 years ago. They don't really care about, um, and maybe they should, but Project Veritas. And they don't really care about the FBI, although that hurt a lot because her trust numbers were so far you know, lower than his. Um, but at the end of it all, what's really important is when you sit around the dinner table, was there enough food? When you know it's time to go see a movie once every three months, can you afford it? Uh, can, can you go and buy a soda and a pack of gum? That's what affects people. Do I really want to see, if I live in Arizona, a 118% increase in the Obamacare cost next year? That's really what affects Americans. Just, just every day, middle of the country, Americans. And if you look at that map, the map is so red, it's unbelievable. you got some blue in San Francisco, some blue in L.A., some blue in New York, some blue in Detroit. But other than that, the, the country, generally speaking, went red last night. In mass, I mean, it was amazing what happened. I'm going to break it down to you very simply. This is what happened last night. It wasn't really left versus right. It wasn't really conservative versus liberal, not by a long stretch, because Donald Trump isn't uh, that awfully conservative. It wasn't really about um, um, uh, the, the WikiLeaks again or Project Veritas or Trump's alleged treatment of women 30 years ago or whatever. This was about, it wasn't even about Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. This was about, do we have a monarchy in, in Washington? Do we have a king and queen? Do we have a, an overlord or a ruler? Do we have fiefdoms and, and executive, you know, fiat-driven dictators? Or do we have a government that's for and by the people? Of, for, and by the people. What does that mean? It means that it is made up of us, not the elites, not the monarchy. It is, it is done for us. Okay, and it's done by us. So it consists of us, we're doing it, and it's for us. We have, for some reason, in eight years, and maybe it was because people were afraid to be called racist or whatever, but for eight years, we sat back and watched a, a dictator do executive order after executive order, changing laws, changing regulations, changing rules, changing our society, changing our value system. That's what we saw for eight straight years. And people did not want that again for four or eight more. So they made the decision. I've got somebody who is establishment. What does that mean? The ruling class. I'm better than you are. I'm smarter than you are. I'm, I'm more in tune with what you need in your life than you'll ever be. And you must listen to what, what I tell you, and you must take the crumbs that fall from my cake. Or somebody who says, you know, I've been employing people for a long time, and I'm a very successful businessman, and I've got a machine that is churning an economy for my business that is very, very successful. I can do that now for the country. And by the way, I'm one of you. So you've got somebody who has made his money through the hard work that somebody listening and watching right now have, have done themselves. And they haven't been able to do recently because their jobs are flying uh, across the border. And then you've got somebody who has made her quarter of a billion dollars, and we, can't, we don't even know why. We don't know why Hillary Clinton has $250, $250 million. We don't know why. I mean, we can surmise from WikiLeaks and from Project Veritas and from the pay-for-play scandal and the FBI and all that. But this really is a very basic question. Do you want to be ruled by an extension of the monarchy we've been under for the last eight years? Or do you want some say in government? Do you want regulations to come off your business so they can bring you back to full-time or bring you back to part-time if you've been laid off? Do we want somebody who is going to take the 95 million Americans, not in the workforce, and do something in a positive fashion to get them back on the job? Or do we want somebody who says, don't worry if you're not in the workforce. We'll give you, you know, these crumbs over here, some entitlements over there, a little bit of Section 8 over here. Just make sure you keep on voting for me. We saw a movement last night in the way people vote in that African Americans stayed home big time. Evangelicals went and voted big time. People say, well, how do evangelicals vote for Donald Trump when there are so many chinks in that armor? It's a good question. I don't think they voted for him. I think they voted against her. I think they voted against dishonesty. I think they voted against corruption. I think they voted against a, an elite class that thinks they're above the law and can do anything. I think they voted against Hillary Clinton. There wasn't a strong enough emotional push for evangelicals four years ago and eight years ago to vote against Barack Obama. And they certainly weren't going to vote for John McCain or Mitt Romney. They just didn't. They didn't feel that connection. With Donald Trump, it's less about the connection for evangelicals, and it's more about, do you want this person who has this history of corruption 
of, of Solalinskyite radicalism. Do we want that person to tell the Supreme Court what it looks like for the next 20, 30, 40 years? Do we want somebody who says, your values don't matter, your religious beliefs don't matter, your traditions don't matter, the way we were founded in this country doesn't matter. Do we want that person, or do we want somebody who has given us a list of who they'll put on the Supreme Court, and then by that list, give us what we've all wanted, which was the idea that the foundation of the country is a good and great foundation. There are people freaking out on social media today, from Miley Cyrus on down. They are freaking out, man. You've got people who are almost literally on the ledge. They say they're on the ledge. I hope they don't. Don't jump. Don't get on the ledge. Because when I walked out today, um, the sky had not fallen to my driveway. So the sky wasn't falling. When I drove down the road, the road didn't have any more potholes in it than it had yesterday. I was able to go and work out. The gym existed. I was able to go to the station, pick up some stuff. It exists. People still were breathing and eating and farting and walking. I mean, everything was okay. The world did not come to an end. No matter what Martha Raddick says, no matter what Julie Chen says, no matter what um, uh, Van Jones, for God's sakes, why anybody gives that guy a microphone and a camera, it didn't matter what he said. What happened was you had a revolution in the country, a revolution to get back to traditional values and get back to work. It's really that simple. You can analyze it any 15 different ways, but that's exactly what happened last night. So I want to hear from you. We've got a lot of things going on today. Bottom of the hour, it'll be Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton. Uh, Ken is going to talk about the results of this election. I'm going to ask him about these lawsuits that Texas and other states have against the Obama administration. Do they go away now? Um, how exactly did the turnout look for Texas and other states? And what does the future look like for the individual states under a president, Donald Trump? We'll have him. Second hour, it's going to be Katie Kiefer who, with the millennial vote. What happened last night? Third hour, it'll be a financial expert, Doug Adler, going to talk about why did the stock market have a 1,000-point swing, for God's sakes, from last night to today. We talk about all that and a ton of your phone calls. Plus, we've got Trump's speech. We've got Clinton's speech. We've got Obama's speech. We've got a lot going on today, and we're just underway. I want to applaud you, those of you in my audience, because you really believed and when I had Donald Trump on, and when I had Eric Trump on, and, and Rudy Giuliani, and, and Newt Gingrich, and all these people, you didn't shut it off and say, you know, that's a pipe dream. What you said was, this really could happen. And this is a major wake-up call to New York City, to L.A., to Hollywood, to the music industry, to pop culture, um, to the movie industry. This is a major wake-up call that you don't necessarily represent America. Americans have stepped up and said, we represent us. And we'll go forward together. We'll tolerate and accept you. Will you tolerate and accept us? That's an interesting point. 1-800-383-9624, JoePags.com. Coming right back. 